Hey guys, what is up and welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we are going to be taking a look at some absolutely enormous 3D rendering and game compatibility changes in Yuzu, the Nintendo Switch emulator. So first up, as you can see on screen, we're going to be taking a look at Super Mario Odyssey. As with my previous video, Super Mario Odyssey is still booting into its main menus with the use of a save transferred over from your Nintendo Switch. However, as you can see in the screen right now, the render quality of Mario in the main menu is 100 times better than we were previously seeing in older builds. Let's now load into our data management screen, load into our game saves area and load into Sand Kingdom in Super Mario Odyssey. And there we go, we are now loaded into gameplay. Due to the fact that there are still unimplemented functions and texture formats in Super Mario Odyssey, you are still not able to see just how much the render and drawing quality has improved in this title. You can also see that practically all of the vertex explosions have been fixed. These improvements to render quality are much more apparent when we enter into the screenshot mode which I previously showed off in my last Super Mario Odyssey Yuzu video. To enter this screenshot mode, all you need to do is press down on your d-pad and then you will be practically given a free camera to look around and switch between different filters. You can also see that practically all of these filters are doing the correct thing, the exact same thing that they do on the Nintendo Switch itself. When we take a look at the Odyssey ship, you can also see that the balloon is now correctly rendered in this version of this emulator. Let's now zoom out our camera and take a look around Sand Kingdom in Super Mario Odyssey. So as you can see, not only is the render quality much much better, we have also seen a slight uplift in the performance in game. You can see that while we are looking down into the town, especially so when we zoom in, we are no longer dropping down to 0 and 0 0.5 frames per second at any given time. Even though performance levels are still quite low, ranging between 2, 3, 4 and 5 frames per second, it is still a much improved performance level than what we were previously seeing in Yuzu. Okay, so now that we've taken a look at Super Mario Odyssey, let's move on to our next 3D rendering and booting into game title, Splatoon 2. For anybody who has watched previous compatibility guides for Yuzu emulator made by myself, you will have seen that Splatoon already booted through to this screen. However, in the past few Canary builds, we are also rendering 3D, booting into the character creation menu and we are also successfully able to create said character. In Splatoon 2 though, the good news does not stop there, as you were about to see, this game is now also booting into gameplay and rendering 3D, although it is doing so in a very, very buggy manner. Unfortunately, at this point in time, due to the fact that Splatoon 2's tutorial, in a very similar fashion to Splatoon 1 on Simu Emulator, requires you to use gyroscope data in order to finish its tutorial. Due to the fact that we are unable to give it any gyro input, we are not able to finish this tutorial and are not able to proceed into gameplay where we would actually be able to change from gyroscope to thumbstick assisted controls. Okay, so now that we've taken a look at Splatoon 2, let's move on to our next title and another Nintendo Switch exclusive, ARMS. For anybody who is not aware, ARMS is actually one of the very first games to boot on Yuzu emulator. However, in the past few Canary builds, as I have previously stated, this game has now much, much better compatibility. We are now able to load through most of these menus and actually proceed into the character selection screen. Due to the fact that shared fonts are now supported in Yuzu but they are not currently rendered, it can make menu navigation difficult at times. You can see however that we are now loaded into the character selection screen where all of these characters are now rendering 3D. Even though it's not perfect, it's still great to see such 3D rendering progress like this. Once again, we cannot see what any of these inputs are, but when I matched them up to what I could see on my Switch, I was able to navigate successfully through all of these menus and actually load into gameplay. And there we go, the first live 3D rendered gameplay of ARMS running on Yuzu emulator. Unfortunately, as with Splatoon 2, due to the fact that ARMS needs motion telemetry and gyroscope data, it is currently not playable on a Yuzu emulator due to the fact that these functions and features have not yet been implemented. Regardless of this fact, it is still absolutely awesome to see all of these games rendering 3D and indeed booting into game. Let's now move on to our second last game for this video, Kirby Star Allies. So in this game, we have another title on Yuzu Emulator which is also booting into its menus and rendering 3D. 
Unfortunately, at the time of making this video, due to the fact that we also have unimplemented texture formats and functions, we are not able to get an accurately rendered main menu due to the fact that we have very high levels of vertex explosion. Hopefully in the coming days and weeks, they will be able to fix these unimplemented features and this game will be in a much more playable and usable state on this emulator. So last but by no means least, let's take a look at our final game of this compatibility video, Xenoblade Chronicles 2. So as we have seen time and time again on Yuzu Emulator, Xenoblade Chronicles 2 is now successfully booting and showing its initial loading screen. As we have seen with countless other titles be it The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild, Super Mario Odyssey or any other game that we have seen boot and go in game in the past weeks and months, it is only a matter of time before the developers of Yuzu are able to implement all of the correct functions which will then allow this game to boot into its in-game menus and then proceed into gameplay. So once again guys, cheers for checking out this quick Yuzu compatibility video, I hope you guys are as excited to watch them as I am to make them. If you want to help with the development of Yuzu Emulator, you can find a link to their Patreon down in the description. So once again guys, cheers for checking out the video, remember to like it if you liked it, dislike it if you didn't, and subscribe to the channel if you want to see all future videos from me.